Welcome back to the channel. I'm George. This is Malaka Motorsports. This is part 13 of Stav's build. As you guys know, in part 12, we talked about the two leaks that Stav had in his car. One was the turbo feed line, which we replaced with a brand new stainless braided line. And the other one was on the oil filter housing that's located on the side of the driver's side block. And it's basically this. So he's got a China replica on there. And there's nothing wrong with China replicated parts uh, in general if they're really good. If they're, if they're made well, it's, it's pretty legit. Problem is when we ordered new seals, we initially thought it was a MoCal unit, um, and they sent over their seals, which have this kind of like really weird groove that has to fit in. Now, the one that Stav has on this car that he bought with the car when he got it a few years ago has different seal requirements, so we can't find a part number, a model number, or anything like it. So we looked around, tried to retrofit uh, seals on it, we replaced it, um, and then it started leaking. So right now, that's the only leak and issue we have with the vehicle. Uh, so Stav just went ahead and just anteed up and ordered this beautiful MoCal unit. It's a sandwich plate for the oil filter housing. I'll show a picture of how it's supposed to be installed, but I got the car up on jacks now. Um, I got the new unit here. Um, it doesn't have the spacer, which I'll show you once we pull the old one off. So the length of the lines, I may need to make new lines for them, but I wanted to get this done so Stav can get back to driving this car. Uh, we're still waiting on the adapter harness. Check this out here for the actual uh, injectors. So he hasn't been driving it all week pretty much. So aside from just getting the harness, he's got his base file and his VEMS ECU. And then now we just got to replace this. So guys, without further ado, let's kick this off. I'm going to show you guys where this goes, what the old one looks like before we install this. Um, and hopefully this is not too much of a pain in the ass since the motor is already installed into the car and bolted on and all that. We're going to have to take the driver's side engine bracket off. Uh, and I'll show you guys what that entails. But guys, this is part 13. Uh, welcome back to the channel. We're going to try to kick off some more videos this week of the Silver Pig. Hopefully we get that started going, but we can't until I get Stavros a shitbox out of my garage. So I have the room to drop the trans and, and replace the clutches on mine, which I'm dying to drive my car again. The car has just literally been sitting there for about a month. So this one's for you, Stav. We're going to replace these seals. So tomorrow, hopefully the harness is coming for the injectors and then you can go and drive the car. So here's the bottom of Stav's car. This is the custom driver side engine bracket that attaches to the 034, basically 1.8 slash 27 engine mount. So it mounts in just like a factory engine, except he's utilizing his custom mount. Don't, don't judge the mount. It's, it works. He got it with the car and so far we're leaving it in. Uh, but keep in mind, in order to get to the oil cooler, which is up in the corner there, I don't know if you guys can see it, that little uh, wrench part right there, to, we have to get this thing off. So we're going to be unscrewing one, two, and then three to try to move this cage out of the way so I can loosen that sandwich that has a really large uh, sandwich plate that has a really large spacer. I don't know if you guys could see it from the bottom, look how much it sticks out. And then uh, we can remove it and then assess how much we have to make new lines for in terms of the lengths and everything. But we're replacing this, I mean, we're removing this to get to that cooler. I should have it off in about two seconds. So update, we've got the engine mount pretty much loose and off. And I'm slowly loosening this oil filter housing, but let me just tell you, with a long wrench, so what, 24? It's like quarter turns, like every two seconds. So this one's gonna take about a good 15, 20 minutes to take off. So I'm gonna take that off, and then we'll see you guys on the work table so we can show you guys the differences between the two pieces. Oh, we're draining some oil. I finally got it, but as you know, the oil filter housing is compact with oil, so it's dripping a bunch so we're gonna let it drain for a minute and i'm gonna yank it out i already disconnected one of the oil cooler lines and then i gotta come here disconnect this top oil cooler line and once that's done then i can pull that sandwich plate and the lines out and then i can evaluate if i have to make longer lines or if i can make the old lines work more than likely i'll have to make new lines Whew. and i think i think i have spare line here somewhere i just don't know where I have to find it. So maybe I might be able to hook up style with brand new lines. I think they're 10 a.m. braided. And I think I have a whole bunch hanging here somewhere. I gotta dig, I gotta dig. There's a bunch of parts just kind of hanging out here. Uh, so we gotta go through all of it. So we're gonna keep progressing on and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when we yank it out in about 10 seconds, all right? So just stand by. All right guys, so we have the old sandwich plate out. Here's the new sandwich plate. I'm pretty sure they're the same fittings. They almost look like it's the same design, except it looks slightly different. This one's for MoCal. And I'm not sure where this is from, but anyway, we're gonna, this is what the pain in the butt was, and this is where it was leaking. And it even has a little bit of damage here. So I think that's where it was probably leaking from, and plus we couldn't get gaskets for it. So the only difference is now, 
style won't be having this spacer. Um, so that's the only thing that's changing. So this doesn't have a spacer. So we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do with that. Um, we may have to make longer lines to account for that length, but I'm gonna see how this works. So let's go over to the work table and we'll start breaking this down. All right, rule number one about Malacca Motorsports, don't ask about the hole that's on the table. Don't ask how it happened, don't ask who's to blame for it, because it was, it was me. I uh, burned the hole through when I was using the torch, didn't realize that the table was plastic underneath, completely torched it. All right, um, so if you guys look down here, here is the new MoCal unit, and here's the old sandwich plate. Um, we can even take it apart. See, this one here has some kind of, it's all ripped, look at that. So we must have maybe jacked this up during install, something must have happened, but that's that spacer. It doesn't have any part numbers or any markings or anything on it, so it's weird if... Maybe this is a MoCal piece and then they use something else? I, I don't know, I'm not sure. But we can't use this sandwich plate because now we don't have... We, we, we can't use this spacer because now we don't have this gasket. So we're going to have to make it work with this. So, there's your MoCal unit. Here's what's going to get threaded onto the block. This bad boy right here. See if I can open this up. Oh. Work harder, not smarter, they say, right? Pop home. So this end's gonna go into the block. We'll tighten it, and then once that's in, this will end up going through. This, uh, is this the new one? Yeah, this is the new one. We'll end up going through, screwing into that, and then tightening it down towards the block. So now we're gonna eliminate this, this need for having this space and then this long ass extension, which we won't need anymore. So kind of excited to see what happens. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we don't have any issues now with this install. So it should be a piece of cake, but this is what caused the leak. So Stav just ended up and bought a brand new one. This came with new fittings. We're gonna tighten these down on the vise. And then uh, these lines should be able to transfer over. I'm pretty sure the 10 a.m. But because now we're losing about maybe about an inch, inch and a quarter now of length, these may not work so we're gonna see maybe we might be able to flip them upside down and make them work i don't know i'm gonna try to get these to to work without us having to make new lines because swedging and, and cutting these aren't that bad but i don't know where my spare lines are i know i had a box of just spare stuff and i don't know where we put it and i like keeping everything pretty much everything within the arm's distance so we can find it Uh, if you guys recognize that sticker, you guys can let me know where is that from. Torque Factory on that skull. They just started up again. I saw them. They made a new brand new Instagram, so they're actually doing stuff. So that's pretty cool. Bunch of old school car guys, B5 guys. So that's the carbon hood that we're going to be throwing on the wide body, but I got to get it fixed and repaired. Crap, Pico. Did you ever see, did you see where I put those lines? Well, the ones you bought like a, two months ago? No, it was just extra. Oh, I think I know where it is. I think I know where it is. Oh, there's a vacuum. Oh, shit. Shit, his bumper. His bumper. Okay, I got extra line over here. Voila. 10 a.m. Pretty sure this is 10. So is this 10? 10. 10. All right, so worst case scenario, we have enough line now. Uh, it looks like it's the same shit anyway. Braided. Except this is new. This is stuff that we got from... There's a place called Brent Racing on Sierra Highway here in Antelope Valley. And then there's another place called uh, Murray's Performance Garage. So both places we'd go to depending on who was open and go get lined. And I always buy extra when we were doing all the fuel, oil lines and shit for my car. So it's always good. Don't throw away the scraps. Uh, but also remember where you put the scraps so you know where to find it. But this is good news. Now we have extra line. And then we can reuse these, separate them, and then re-swedge and make our own line. So this is actually pretty cool. All right, guys, so let's, I'm going to leave you here. I'm going to start separating these, get some time-lapse footage for you guys going, and then I'm going to double-check the line. If I have to make new lines, I'll show you guys how I do them. If you guys haven't done them before, they're not super hard. You can do them with a basic vise, and I'll, I'll show you. I mean, I kind of scratch up the fitting every time I do it anyway, so don't exactly follow me, but I'll show you how easy it is to kind of make your own lines here in the garage. But there is a benefit to professionally swedge really badass lines. Again, like we talked about in the last episode, especially oil feed lines, you get professionally swedged. It also has a smaller silhouette, 
versus now these fittings that are larger that are meant for you know for you to make your own lines. Just keep in mind that's the difference. Shit, don't pay attention to the hole. You see right. these pico? Mm -hmm. Look, see I'm greasing these up. You don't want to install them dry, so just make sure you just put a little bit of grease, not too much, just enough so as you're tightening them, it doesn't kind of tear these apart. Uh, we may have done that a couple times in the past and kind of learned our lesson. And this is a pretty annoying install because of where the location is. Preferably, I'd I would have liked to wait to do this, but Stav was, listen, he wanted to get the car back together, so he wanted to put everything back in the same place. Um, so he didn't want to wait for the MoCal stuff to come in. Oh, caught it. Caught it. We're good. He didn't want to wait for the MoCal stuff to come in. So he wanted to get the car going, start driving it again, blah, 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 blah. So here we are. That installs like that. A little bit of grease. And then the cap too. Um, it's already in and you don't have to remove it, but I have a little scribe and without damaging the O-ring. Uh, hopefully I don't damage it. There we go, pops it right out. Take that, see what I'm doing? Just putting a little bit of grease on there, just a little bit. So now that's gonna be properly lubricated. And then where's that little like miniature Roseanne fitting? So again, this is gonna go to the block. So um, I could show you guys on this block right here. So essentially this will go right here and this and just it should screw in. There we go. So this is the way it's gonna install on the driver's side on, on Stav's car. Uh, and then I'll just snug it down. Those little fittings will bite into the block. And that's pretty much it. And then the cap will basically let me see if I can grab it. So the idea is is that this oil cooler will essentially be installed this way, gasket towards the block on the mating surface. This comes in. Let's see and it will screw in now this is not going to go all the way in because the other part didn't swedge itself into the block but as you guys understand that's the way it's going to be so now that we're losing about an inch in i'm going to have to extend the lines out probably another half inch maybe another inch inch and a half depending on i think it's about an inch inch longer and we should be safe but now Stav won't have an unnecessary spacer for no reason. Now this will go straight to the block. So that's the way it's going to install, folks. And that's what we're going to do on Stav's block. So anyone that sees us talking crap and kind of like busting each other's balls over this stuff, just know that it's a lot of banter on this channel. And obviously I run the 24 valve, he runs a 12 valve, but it's all love. You know, we both love the VR6. And this is exactly what you're going to have to be doing when you're doing this kind of build. Things are going to go wrong. Things are going to break. Uh, you're going to notice things that were developed are not really as good as these people said they were. So you're going to have to redo them. And, and that's, the, that's the, the, the stigma with, you know, custom motor swaps, especially into older Audis that already have a nightmare dealing with tuners and vendors and stuff like that. Absolute nightmare. So just take everything with a grain of salt, guys. Don't, don't let this discourage you. Don't let this kind of make you think that you're going to give up on the swap. Listen, I tried this swap. It was 2007 uh, when I was still in New York and I just gave up. Didn't have the resources, didn't have the time, didn't have friends, didn't have anyone to really help me. And at that time, Stav was really much younger. So now that we're both older, we both have the time, we both have more resources now, but we know that we don't give up as easy. So a lot of this stuff will piss someone off and, and kind of discourage them to moving forward and just get angry with something that just always needs work. Just know if you're doing a custom 12 valve or a custom 24 valve VR6 swap, you're gonna have something that's always requiring you to wrench. Unless you wanna buy a newer car or just do software upgrades and just daily drive that, that's great. But when you're doing a project like this, just know uh, you're always gonna be wrenching, you're always gonna be working on it, you're always gonna be fixing things that break because sometimes even really, really good parts just go bad and they just need to be swapped out. That's just the name of the game. Anyway, I'm gonna go slide this onto Stav's block, uh, snug it on there, I'm gonna install this. We're gonna make him some new lines. I'll show you guys what we do on my makeshift little vise here that I just placed on the table. You might've seen that in the time lapse. Don't make fun of me, I just placed it on there. And I'll show you guys how we make our own lines real quick. All right guys, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so uh, don't mind the kind of jerry-rigged uh, vise there that we just placed on the table. Uh, I had to move it to my work table just so it's easier, but. I'm undoing the old line, so these basically kind of screw into each other and so-called like swedge. I'm gonna pop off the rubber caps. 
Uh, once I get them off, um, I'm replacing the lines with new lines that are a little bit longer to account for us not having a spacer now, so about an inch, about an extra inch per the line, inch, inch and a half, give or take. And plus, if there's a lot of engine movement, it's going to give that oil line some slack rather than pulling tight uh, on the oil cooler and then the sandwich plate, so we don't want any failures. But again, you know, uh, for, for anyone making lines at home or anything like that, this is a really easy solution, basic tools. But uh, the key is here, use lots of grease and lube because uh, I did this for the fuel lines in the B5 in the VRT back when we first did this, like got the swap running in 2015, 2016. Uh, ended up, half my lines were leaking because I did it dry and ended up tearing up all the rubber on the inside of the lines and that kind of sucks. So I had to redo those. But again, as long as you guys are using lubrication, take your time, make sure those cuts are straight. You guys should be good. And it's fairly simple. Just be careful you guys don't strip the threads. If it's not going in straight, just stop. But that's it. That's how we make our lines here at the house. Swedge new lines that are longer that are going to compensate for this not having using this spacer in the old kit. And we're going to install the new kit. But it's going to be a wrap for tonight. It's not the end of the video. But it's about 2 in the morning. And uh, I got work in a few hours. So we're going to call it a night. And I'll be back in like 10 seconds tomorrow night. And... Um, We'll finish this install up. Hopefully by then we'll have the adapters and maybe we might be able to even fire her up with a new base file. So, uh, we'll see you guys in two seconds yeah. with the magic of, uh, of movie editing. Ready? Good night, guys. And we're back. It's the next day. It's Wednesday morning and we are ready to rock and roll. We have the sandwich plate all done up, brand new one, new lines. Essentially, we reused the fittings, but we had to make these lines a little bit longer to accommodate Stav not needing or not using this spacer. So we're going to slap this on, install it. Also, Stav's adapter harnesses came in from Fuel Injector Clinic. So now his injectors are plugged in. Stav's going to load the base file onto his car for the new 20, 2150cc injectors. Uh, he went from, I think, 13 or 1400s, jumping all the way up to 2150 a piece. So I'm actually pretty excited. And it looks like, so this has been broken for what some time, and full disclosure, I broke this for his dipstick, so I'm gonna have to buy him a dipstick. If you guys have recommendations on a dipstick for a 12 valve VR6, put them in the comments below if you can. Um, I saw some randomly online, some billet ones, some really cool plastic, like brand new ones. Let me know what you guys are using, because I need to buy him one, I owe him one. So if you guys could help me out, let me know where to go, and I'll snag one up. But we are getting ready to install his oil sandwich plate, hook it up to the oil cooler, and then start this bad boy up on the base file. And then Stav can start driving, fine tuning, and then maybe in a couple weeks, um, when I pick up the RS3, I can go, hopefully in a couple weeks when I pick up the RS3, Stav can tag along and drive his car there and get it tuned by Nick over there at Iris Motorsports. So, really excited. Let's get this going. This is the second half of part 13. Let's get this thing fired up. No more leaks. Cross our fingers. Welcome back, guys. I'm George from Malacca Motorsports. Pico. You know, that's Paul in the back, and we're ready to rock and roll, guys. So let's kick all this right, off. All right, so huge update. We actually had to scrap what we were doing. So here's the problem, or it, there was a problem. Uh, where's the spacer at? So initially, when Stav bought this car, it had a VR6 swap stock block, and it had this on the oil filter housing. So it had a spacer that went in together with the, with the, with the oil sandwich plate. Well, there's no point in using the spacer since it's not needed. However, uh, we realized why it was needed because the old owner, uh, I guess the, so we, I guess we know why it's needed. It's because there's a cracked cooling pipe that travels over, let me see, is it on the stock? So many motors here. So here's the water pump and then there's a pipe that goes all the way out here. And that oil cooler right above it, there's no clearance. So this is the line that would be normally on there. And you see how high that is? It would literally hit against there if you weren't using the spacer. Uh, but he used the spacer to bring it out so you wouldn't have to worry about clearance. Well, we've eliminated the spacer and we saw we needed a clearance issue on the top of the sandwich plate. So after running around today and buying a few different fittings and figuring out what works and what doesn't after stripping and breaking some stuff, we finally went down and got these little low profile brass fittings, half inch pipe to 10. And now look at the silhouette. So that's literally how much shorter it is. And now this is gonna clear the coolant pipe. Do we have an extra crack pipe here? So this way we can kind of show it. Oh, here we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I dropped something. All right, so now this crack pipe anymore 
See, that's the coolant pipe that travels over on the passenger, uh, on the driver's side. So instead of it hitting now, now it's literally that much clearance and we're good to go. So the 10 AN lines are gonna go straight to the oil cooler. They're gonna clear underneath and now we don't have to use the spacer for no reason. So now we simplified stuff, set up, made things a little bit easier. Um, brass fittings don't really, you know, I mean, he's got some gold pieces on there, so I guess it kind of works, but we're using some brass fittings on there versus, you know, something that's painted black or maybe another color, but uh, so far this is good to go. So we're about to install it now with the mocap plate. That goes on top of there. And this literally will sandwich onto the motor with the new seal. Uh, and where did I put that seal? Oh, here we go. I got to relubricate it on, but now you guys see it. So this will work now without needing a spacer. We'll clear the coolant pipe that travels from the water pump to the thermostat housing on the 12 LV or 6. Um, and we shouldn't have any issues. And then we'll just bolt right up to these. The only thing different is, is that so, uh, instead of using these elbows, we went and got these straights. So I just got to swap these out. So now it's going to be straight, straight fittings going into here and then the other side going into the oil cooler. So we're getting there guys, we're getting there a little bit of a snag, but just keep in mind if you guys are seeing this issue on the swap that you're doing, or even if you're, you're running like a Mark IV or a Mark III VR6 and you're looking to run these uh, uh, oil coolers for MoCal with the sandwich plate, no, there's no need for a spacer. You guys, as long as you go and spend about 20, 30 bucks in just these two fittings, now it just fits on the here, and then now you don't need extra gaskets and an extra space for no reason. Anyway, carrying on guys, we're gonna slap this on, and then we're gonna fire this bad boy up as soon as Stav gets here in the next 30 or 40 minutes. All right, let's kick this off. All right, so. Oil cooler is, oil cooler lines are on, sandwich plate is on. All the connectors are pretty much on. I know it kind of looks like everything's all over the place. We haven't tidied anything up. And these little extensions that came with FIC, they got like a, a little to no flex on them. So they kind of stick out, kind of hardcore there. Looks a little busy, but we're gonna have to kind of clean this area up. But it is ready to start up, but it's not my car. And I don't want to take the honor from Stav. Obviously it's his vehicle. Um, from the first startup with 2150s with the new file and plus I don't even know if he loaded it on the ECU so either way uh, we're gonna do this is gonna stay one video and we'll be back in about two seconds with Stav on the first start we'll make sure there's no leaks from now the new seal new oil cooler sandwich plate that we installed and if everything else looks good then he'll take a log send it out get a revised base file now and then we can start driving this thing around and then we can maybe go to Vegas and get this thing tuned and makes power so uh, yeah, that's on. That's on and that's good. It is a pain in the butt because Stav's brackets are so tight on the side of it. So it took a little finessing. And obviously you guys have been following this video now and watching and seeing the issue and kind of things that we had to do to get this oil sandwich plate to work uh, without a spacer. But it's on. And she's on all four wheels now. And now just waiting for Stav to come over and start her up. So we'll be back in just a second with the magic of video editing Stav will be here he'll be firing up his car and then we'll see what happens from then guys so we'll be back in about two seconds what do you think oh yeah all right so we'll be back in two seconds so we're back Stav's here pretty much got the car ready to go we're about to do the first start on his base file with the 2150 cc injectors Stav is on his vems website slash program and he's getting ready to load it so what's the process here, Stav? What are you, what are you pretty much doing? How's the VEMS work? Uh, you input information, it changes the tune, and then we run the car. So this is the program you use on, on, on yeah. the laptop? Correct, yes. Yeah, and it's, you're it's, getting ready to flash the file? Correct. How long does the flashing take with VEMS? Mm, depending on how big the config file is, but usually about 10 seconds. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So we're about to start it up. You're about a what, minute away? About a minute away, yeah. Cool, cool. You can tell from his... Uh, from his tone, he's so excited. But we're gonna be looking to make sure there's no leaks, uh, make sure that the fuel rail's not leaking. We even primed it before on the old file just to kind of see what was going on and see if there's anything leaking. But now I guess with the base file, maybe it'll actually open up the injectors. Uh, make sure that this oil line doesn't leak the brand new one that we put in, stainless steel braided. And as long as he doesn't have any leaks, he's gonna be logging, taking those base logs. Uh, Stop, is this gonna be a file you could drive on? Once you try to start it up. All right, so as long as it looks smooth and it actually 
it idles right. If it does on the first time, we'll see. If not, we may have to send a couple more revisions because we installed the 2150cc injectors in lieu of Stav's 1300cc injectors he had before. So before the car is safe to drive, a um, couple logs are going to be sent out. So we're about to do the first start with you here. And then Paul's just walking back and forth. Just, just chilling. What are you doing? Just, I'm um, just chilling. Just, I don't know, just watching watch until the bad boy starts up. You think, uh, you think it's going to fire up on the first time or what? Oh yeah, of course, 12 watts. Yeah, 12 <laughs> Oh man, I'm excited. I'm excited for Stav. Get this thing fired up. Well, we got to put a clamp on that one there. Uh, where is it at? Oh, it's right there. But we're going to have to sort this car out, get it tuned, driving, making some power, and then we'll have to route the vacuum lines and then put his boost controller uh, probably mounted on that firewall there and then run the vacuum line. So when he starts driving, he can actually put some, some boost other than wastegate pressure to the motor. Uh, but so far so good. I, I'm excited. Come on, Stav. Are you done loading the file or what? Stav's uh, on Facebook probably. Oh, but almost there, guys. We're almost there. I mean, as you guys know, it's it's always been a struggle uh, doing these kinds of builds. Uh, it's one step forward, ten step back. So you know, Stav's had a struggle with this vehicle and his build, but now it looks like we got something good going. Things are looking really well. Uh, once we put about a thousand miles on the motor, we're going to compression test it, see how it looks. I was going to keep logging, driving, putting boost to it. And as long as it holds up, we'd really like to take it to Vegas, make some power, throw some big boost at it and see if this thing holds up and does well, which I don't know. It's, it's looking really, really good. So I'm really excited for Stav to get this thing up and running and making some power. And then, uh, again, like I said, as soon as Stav's, um, Stav ship box is done, uh, I want to move mine over. Um, get it up, drop the motor in trans, and then refresh the clutches on the Silver Piggy. Um, so yeah, I know you guys like my new window shade, but I ordered it and it's too big. It doesn't even fit in the car, so I kind of left it outside. Might work on the truck maybe, because the truck has a huge windshield, but um, I really bought it for this car, but it doesn't work. This is the way. All right. All right. Give her a start, stop. Alright. <laughs> that started right up. This episode we replaced the sandwich plate had a run around with that with the fittings had to figure stuff out for clearance issues we didn't anticipate having especially when we were deleting that spacer actually it doesn't sound bad for 2150 cc injectors six of them and being the first startup base tune it's pretty good get it up to temp. Stop went with a thermostatic uh, sandwich plate. So the thermostatic won't open up till it's, you know, up to temp. So once it's actually flowing, we'll double check and see if there's any leaks. But so far on the injectors, so far you can check here, there's no leaks. We had to kind of trim this bracket, bring the uh, fuel rail down in. But uh, so far, no issues. I don't see any leaks anywhere. It looks pretty dry. I don't see nothing, you know, dripping. So that's always a good thing. When something is not leaking, it is good. And listen to that, it sounds so good. There's a slight whistle in this, 
like a high pitch whistle. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Not sure if it's the belt system or not. We have to double check to make sure all the vacuum ports are, you know, plugged or either hooked up. But other than that, it's a pretty quiet motor. It's really nice. This is really good. I'm really happy for stop. So hopefully now we can get this thing. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much broken in now. You know, a lot of people get, a lot of people say you put a motor together, you get it on the dyno, you break it in on the dyno. Um, but, you know, Stop wanted to put a few hundred miles on it. I think he wants to put up to a thousand now. Make sure no, you know, no issues, no leaks. As you guys saw in my last dyno video, I had a coolant line popped off. Had I been a little bit more careful, more precarious on beating up the car and kind of seeing what's issues so I don't have to clean up coolant at some guy's dyno or some guy's shop, I probably would have caught that. So Stav wants to be a little bit more careful this time. So it's a little lumpy, you know, Stav is running an aftermarket cam, uh, plus it's got 2150cc injectors, he's running a single in-tank pump right now, uh, should be able to make the same power that I did, however, uh, he may make more, being that he's starting off with a much larger injector than I did, I was running 1400cc injectors uh, with a single in-tank pump, and we made 750 wheel, I suspect he'll be able to make a little bit more since he's got more injector and maybe he can mess around with base pressure depending on what the tuner wants to set him at but uh, you know it's idling pretty good this is the first file so I don't know Stav I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy it sounds pretty good but you know there's a lot of smoothing out to happen yeah I mean this is the first file uh, I'm gonna I'm taking a log right now I'm gonna send it over and uh, we'll see exactly how it goes you know what I mean uh, this is just the first file. I'm sure there'll be a couple revisions and then we'll go driving, get more revisions. Uh, just want to make it drivable so I can put more miles and then we'll uh, we'll get it, we'll get on the dyno and make some power. Uh, but overall, I'm really happy. I mean, the, the new injector sounds smooth. I mean, I don't see any issues. George is saying there's no leaks over there. So uh, that seems to be great. You know, that there's no uh, uh, issues after we just re resolve them. So I'll probably make, you know, on one pump, some, you know, with a 12 valve, 2,638 wheel, um, you know, low boost, you know, but, um, you know, that, that's just what 12 valves do. You know, George wasn't able to make more because 24 valve heads apparently don't flow very well. <laughs> hey, is, is it up to temp now? Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, no leaks. Everything looks pretty good. So everything looks like it's holding in terms of what we changed. So maybe, is that a little backfire? On his, on his 12 valve VR6. Did you get that intentional? <laughs> he's running so rich, he's backfired. Give me the camera. All right, guys, so we're gonna close off this episode here now. Uh, she's up and running on the base file for the 2150cc. There's no leaks, thank God. Uh, we're gonna see if we can do one more revision with the tuner, get the car out on the road, put some more miles. As long as it doesn't drip anything, we're looking to throw some power at it, so. Sounds really good. Oh my God, pops and banks. Crackle and pop. Oh. Uh, 
B5RS3 crackling pops. I hate it. I hate it. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. I'm George. This is the conclusion of part 13. We'll see you on the next episode.